Hello guys! Welcome back to another video. So today we are back with more, another special program. Um, we were very late with the Genshin one and this came out today, so hopefully I'm going to get it up today. Um, anyway, yes, we're here with the 1.6 special program. I have been a little bit, like, in a love-hate relationship with Honkai Star at the moment. Like, I really want to be engaged with the story and events, but, like, I'm not that much at the moment. I don't know why. We still have that haunting of the Lafu, which I'm trying to do. Um, but yeah, I'm actually very, very excited. Now, I did just record an intro without any <laughs> microphone, so it's going real well. Um, anyway, let me know what you're excited for down below. And don't forget to, you know, like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And let's go. We're going to try not to pause, but this is me. So, are we ready? Do we all have our drinks ready? I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it goes. Three genius society members at the same time? Three. <gasps> Squillium! It was a bad idea. Mr. Scroolum. Member Scroolum. 76, sophisticated mechanical aristocrat and renowned leader. Not to mention... All right, intense music, jeez. life throughout the universe. He's as sharp as they come. They recognize my brilliance at an instant. Now, if I can just get him to recommend me. And his astonishing wisdom in the field of broadcasting has been duly recognized oh. by Noose themself. Ergo, the Genius Society hereby confers upon Mr. Albert the title of Member 85. Member 81, Ron May. She seemed like a kind and she, I love her. person in the simulated universe. A little distant though, but what if I ask a bad question? <laughs> Since when does Albert ask bad questions? <laughs> Miss Hatter? This little bird has an active imagination. Uh, her eyes. Daydreaming! <laughs> the program is about to start! What are you waiting for? A trailer or something? Okay, we're gonna get to it. I thought member four, Hoka Kakamon, oh, had gotten rid of most of the society members. I didn't have a lot of hope for this. Oh, oh kitty! Look who's here. Thing. Buzz. Pets. Madam Herta, open zone. Buzz. Okay, music. Class one, clearance zone. Permission status. Madam Monday. There's much you don't know about the space station. Oh my it's god! Really your expression until you've ascertained the situation. No! If not, you'll be full of weaknesses that others can see through. Ma'am. Ma'am. She is so motherly. Oh, it's this guy! Oh. You look troubled. A portrait of I am troubled. Terminal. Do try to think for yourself. He's giving me our Hatham vibes. The gods of the starry skies have abandoned the world. Only the wounded savior can bathe the world in the firelight of destruction. No matter the distance, Who's this now? Annihilation will find you. Sparrow? <laughs> Audience dies. How ostentatious. Hey. Okay, so the first little thing. Her, I love her design so much. I'm so excited for her. This, what's his name? Dr. Ratio or something. He is interesting. He's giving me our Hatham vibes. Damn, he's muscular. Okay, anyway, respectfully looking. Let's just, uh, go for a little bit. Yep. Oh, sorry. You're, I, I love her. I love her. Ooh, and whether or not your world has a day-night cycle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And if you didn't know already, I'm Albert, your favorite feather announcer. Welcome to the version 1.6 Crown of the Mundane and Divine Special Program. Yeah. Today's program, 
we're bringing together three intellectual heavyweights from none other than the Genius Society. Oh, why don't you introduce yourselves? <laughs> Madam Herda, you to kick us off? Yeah, whatever. Herda here. Herda. <clears throat> <laughs> Remember? Enthusiasm. <laughs> Seriously? Fine. Hello, I'm Herda. <laughs> Now we're talking. Uh, and uh, let's not forget the new face on the block, Madam Ron May. Ron May. Hello, dear viewers. I'm Ron May. I suppose that makes it my turn. Greetings, viewers. I am Scroolum. It's Scroolum. a pleasure to meet you. Oh, the pleasure is oh God. I'm so excited <laughs> I'm now. Interviewing all three of you at the same time. <laughs> I guess the great news must have finally recognized my potential. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. This is a sketch. I just hate how she's looking visits. at me. Lucky for she's you, just... we had time for a show. Or to put it another way, participating in your program was a way of maximizing the utility of our itinerary. <laughs> Two birds, one stone. <laughs> Thank you. Is this going to be a simulated uh, universe anyhow. update? I wonder. Oh, we saw from the trailer that the story is making a return to her to space station. Intelligence available for release oh. in the case the following. Madam Ron May has commandeered one of the space station zones for biological science experiments. <laughs> I like to avoid attracting too much attention with my experiments. And the station had a sealed off area available. Is she going to be like Angela's sweet but twisted? Enough to lend it to me. Big enough to spread across three levels. This area is a brand new domain waiting for us in version 1.6. Oh. Welcome to Herda Space Station Seclusion Zone. Due to the secrecy surrounding the zone, there's currently not a soul to be found across the whole domain. Rebuttal. Your assertion excludes the existence of inorganic life operating in the area. <laughs> Naturally, as I was saying, the story is set to unfold in this new domain. Wait, what are these weird little cats in the cat bed? The seclusion zone, Ron May? I do. My research has encountered a few anomalies. I was hoping the Trailblazer could do me a small favor. A favor? A small. Yeah. I'm oh yeah, similar sure to universe. Yeah. The second one, but this is a golden age for biological science. No problem too big or too small, right? And version one point six is brand new trailblazers continuance, crown of the mundane and divine. Trailblazers will encounter Madame Ron May for the first time. They'll need to work closely with her to solve the headaches of her to space station. For example. Okay. <laughs> One such headache is the result of the little life forms that Ron May has been cultivating. I'm afraid Kiddies. that's the nature of biological science. Surprises and accidents in equal measure. Not to mention, the space station is hiding more secrets than you might have thought. Various crises bubbling to the surface, heard his puppet falling prey to an ambush, and a new provocation that the geniuses must face up to. Nothing a small favor can't fix, right? We got the three geniuses okay. here. What could go wrong? In Mr. Albert's previous broadcasts, the adoption of a light-hearted tone usually indicates the presence of a formidable challenge. <laughs> My beak is sealed. This is a top secret experiment. But trust me, when I say that the adventure ahead is a journey into both the power and wonder of biological science. And what better way to prepare our trailblazers than by introducing the one and only Madam Ron May? Oh my. I love her. Is she a healer? Harmony? That's what I meant to say. A mother. Madame She's mothering. Is an ice she is a harmony. Following the path of harmony and Ooh. member 81 of the Genius Society. From the very beginning, her research has focused on biological science. That's right. Biological science is a boundless field. I rarely have time for leisure. 
And despite being one of the founders of the simulated universe, I seldom step up to the plate. Madam Rame, I was curious. Is there a story behind your name? My name? My parents organized themselves into a flat hierarchical structure. My name is simply the combination of their surnames. Fascinating! What oh. a spellbinder tradition. I believe you may be laying it on a little thick, Mr. Albert. Are There's you red hoping for thread. something in return? Like that side. Uh, who wouldn't hope for a blessing from Madame Ron May? I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't pass it up. <laughs> then let me remind you that a genius's blessing isn't always a result of generosity or kindness. <laughs> Meaning... Aren't you supposed to be intelligent? You tell me. Many individuals <laughs> How have hidden That is so side. funny, jeez. Ergo, trailblazers encounter with Ron May may hold surprises. But I, I love her. I love her I so much. I think it's time we took a look at what this elegant scholar can do on the battlefield. Don't you? My basic These? attack. Oh. Threading Fragrance deals ice damage to a single target, while my okay. skill, String Sing Slow Swirls, can increase the weakness break efficiency of all allies. There's also my ultimate, Petals to Stream, Repose and Dream, which creates a field. Only the most beautiful field I've ever seen. <laughs> a work of art, madam. Within huh. the field, allies experience an all-type resistance penetration increase. And when breaking an enemy's weakness, they afflict them with a mark. This mark is triggered on the enemy's next action, prolonging their weakness break state, delaying their action, and inflicting them with additional ice damage. You have a knack for exploiting ah. an enemy's weakness, Ron May. <laughs> I'll say! And we didn't even mention her technique! Silken Serenade! Which allows the team to automatically trigger an effect equivalent to her skill at the start of the next battle. In the simulated universe, when Ron May possesses Silken Serenade, and when an ally attacks a simulated universe enemy, the battle is entered as if the enemy's weakness was attacked. The attack ignores weakness types and can deplete the toughness of all enemies. Breaking a weakness can trigger the weakness break effect that corresponds to the attacker's own type. Not only that, in the simulated universe, for every blessing possessed, the toughness reducing damage of the current attack is increased, and extra additional ice damage is dealt. Wow, well, huh. very good. Sounds to me like you have an interest in testing the simulated universe. After Trailblazers get to know Ron May, Another scholar with connections to the Gene Society will be appearing in this Trailblaze Continuance. Oh, I assume you're referring to the gentleman with the alabaster head? Classic Mr. Scrollum. <laughs> Able to see the gentleman behind the mask. Okay. Oh, gentlemen, my foot! <sighs> Herta, you're being a little harsh. Sounds like you two are well acquainted. <laughs> Without further ado, Allow me to introduce him. I'm not too excited for her gameplay yet, but he is interesting me. <laughs> Did you just get hit on the head with an apple? Oh, we do a maths in this bitch. Jeez. Or Dr. Ratio, as he's known, is an imaginary Imagine. type character following the path of the hunt. He belongs to a different noose worshipping organization, the Intelligentsia Guild. Which is why I can't stand the sight of him. The Genius Society consists of vanguards from various fields who act in isolation. In contrast, the Intelligentsia Guild advocates for the dissemination of knowledge allowing for a broad church of followers of Noose who work towards furthering this end. Question. Does the current universe derive greater benefit from the unparalleled talents of the Genius Society or the mutual learnings of the Intelligentsia Guild? You sure you want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> How does so funny? I love her. Is that why Dr. Ratio joined the Intelligentsia Guild? A devotion to science, a desire to share scientific knowledge? Exactly! Dr. Ratio presides over a total of 52 academic programs. 
and yells at people until they burst into tears. Well, strict teachers make for good students, and any student who makes it to the end of a program will be an expert scholar in their respective field. And an emotional wreck. Oh. Ignorance is an ailment, the expungement of which only our doctor ratio can achieve, and which entails necessary hardship. By which you mean the destruction of any and all self-esteem. <laughs> His creations have helped many worlds look beyond their borders and step into the future. I feel like we might accidentally be discussing... Perhaps I should intervene. Dr. Ratio's desire to cure ignorance with truth is well known. It's time for us to assess his prowess on the battlefield. Yeah, I'm a bit curious. Through his basic attack, mind is might. Dr. Ratio brandishes his codex, dealing imaginary damage to a single target. Question, why does he carry a codex with him? Well, intellectuals enjoy persuading others with quotes. I think Dr. Ratio takes that to mean hitting people with them directly. Dr. Ratio's skill, intellectual midwifery, deals imaginary damage to a single target, while his talent, Kokito Ergo Sum, may trigger him to launch a follow-up attack after using his skill. As a rigorous oh. academic researcher, Dr. Ratio pays close attention to his enemy's debuffs during battle. The more debuffs the enemy has, the higher the chance of him launching a follow-up attack. And okay. let's not forget his ultimate, three-step paradox. The good doctor summons a leaning tower and through a series of precise calculations and measurements, plus a trajectory of maximum pain. The target enemy suffers imaginary damage and is afflicted with Wise Man's Folly. When a target with Wise Man's Folly is attacked by an ally of Dr. Ratio, he launches his talent's follow-up attack against the target. And when using his technique, Mold of Idolatry, Dr. Ratio creates a dimension and taunts nearby enemies. When attacking an enemy within the dimension to enter battle, there's a chance of reducing the target's speed. It would appear those five statues are made in his own image. Ergo, okay. Dr. Ratio suffers from a certain degree of narcissism. <laughs> Damn, call him out like that. <laughs> also in version 1.6, Trailblazers will finally be running into an old friend. The elder of two siblings, very different from the other, yet bound to her all the same. It's Hanya's elder sister, Shreyi. Shreyi, oh... I love Hanya at the moment. Oh, she uses like katanas. Okay, I've all three of them. I'm excited for her. Quantum type character following the path of destruction. Ooh. Whose original body was replaced long ago with a permanent puppet system. The system was constructed for Shui Yi on behalf of the Ten Lords Commission. The commission agreed that for every culprit Shui Yi apprehended, she would be rewarded with a half day's wake span. Hmm. A reasonable oh. arrangement. Better than my one. <coughs> <coughs> like her sister Hanya. Shui Yi is a formidable presence on the battlefield. Shui Yi's basic attack, Mara Sunder All, can deal quantum damage to a target enemy. Her skill, Iniquity Obliteration, can deal quantum damage to a single target and adjacent enemies. And as a judge of the Ten Lords Commission, Shui Yi's talent is a little out of the ordinary. When Shui Yi and an ally deal damage to an enemy's toughness, stacks of karma are accumulated. Hmm. So she's good at trying criminals? <laughs> the best! When Karma stacks to the upper limit, Shui Yi immediately launches a follow-up attack on the target enemy, dealing quantum damage. Her ultimate, Divine Castigation, can deal quantum damage to a single target and toughness depletion that ignores weakness types. The more toughness depleted, the greater the damage. Breaking weaknesses irrespective of type. Phew, these Sienjo natives are cold-blooded. When Shui Yi uses her technique, Summary Execution, to attack an enemy and enter battle, she deals quantum damage to all enemies. Mm. Mm. Oh, I'm <laughs> so excited for her. <laughs> it's time. We talked about version 1.6's banners. During the first phase of version 1.6 in the character Ooh. event warps, Floral Triptych and a Lost Soul. Trailblazers can obtain the limited five-star characters Ron May and Blade, respectively. 
Not to mention, the four-star character Shui Yi will be joining version 1.6's first phase, Character Warp. Oh, it's Bandage Guy. Bandage Guy. During the second phase of version 1.6 in the character event warps, Panta Ray and Nessun Dorma, Trailblazers can obtain the limited five-star characters, Dr. Ratio and... Kyle I think I have all of those at <laughs> six now. I wondered <sighs> when that lady might be making a return. Oh, Kafka. I'll be glad to see the back of her. Then let's not forget Light Cone. At 1.6's first phase Light Cone event warp, Damn. the drop rate of the five-star Light Cone, my past self in the mirror, will be boosted. And Damn. in the Bicone Reminiscence Light Cone event warp, the drop rate of the five-star Light Cone, the unreachable side, will also be boosted version 1.6's second phase will also see the five star Sir, light cone put on a t-shirt damn it <laughs> entering the light cone event war <sighs> oh he said thor i thought he said both the body and the mind it is of great benefit to our consideration of both the universe and philosophy damn it why is he hot why are both these characters hot damn it i hate this game finally in the aforementioned oh. bygone reminiscence light cone of bed warp oh. the drop rate of the five star oh. light cone patience is all you need will also be boosted Woo. light cones it's been a pleasure I think it's time for some mental recuperation oh I know stay tuned for more updates Okay, so while uh, this is going on, we'll just have a quick little chat. Um, <clears throat> I've forgotten how to say her name. Run May, Run May. She seems really interesting. Um, with the sense of like having the break effectiveness, we're gonna have to see if that changes anything or if it is an actual bonus having her in the team. Um. I don't know, I'm just thinking, like, the only person I can think that works with break effectiveness is Himoko. And... I guess the new character. Um, I don't know, both of these five stars... Don't seem like anything, like, crazy, like what we've been having with, obviously, like, Blade, and then Imbiber to Lune, Kafka, um... But it might be because they were, like, at the beginning of the game where we didn't have many units to now. Oh! Now that we've introduced our new characters, it's time to delve deep. I'm just going to pause you for one second. Um, but, yeah, Hanya's sister, I'm actually really, really excited for. I wonder how well she would work in a, um, like, fully quantum team. We're also getting a lot of quantum and imaginary. I think the only, like, main DPS character I don't have at the moment is a fire. Hmm. Okay, anyway. Let's get back to it. First up, something that's about to make a big splash on the space station. What in the world is that? Oh, one of those things. I can see how that would make a big splash. Do I recall someone mentioning accidents on the space station? In the process of clone cultivation, Madame Ron May did encounter Ron a May. certain anomaly. An anomaly in the form of a Swarm King prototype and fierce Swarm Disaster entity, Star Crusher. I still haven't defeated Swarm that. Swarm King Scarakabaz. Thanks to an incident during the experiment, this borehole planet's old crater came into being. And it looks like a lively one. There's that light-hearted tone again. Ergo, we're screwed. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't panic. Madame Ron May has shared with us one of her research papers. <clears throat> Star Crusher Swarm King Scarakabaz. Analysis of asexual propagation performance induced by specific gene sequences. <laughs> Let's start with the abstract and keywords, shall we? <laughs> Ugh, get to the point! <laughs> Leave right. it to me. Star Crusher Swarm King Scarakabaz possesses immense propagative capabilities. When in its multiply state, the Swarm King produces more of its own kind with every attack it sustains. Wait, oh. every attack? 
So the swarm just keeps multiplying the more we fight it? As somebody's getting fired. How? <laughs> this multiply state is also when the <laughs> Sorry, that was so out of pocket. Wait, I was really trying to pay attention to what was going on. Okay, wait. Every attack? So the swarm just keeps multiplying the more we fight it? As somebody's getting fired. However, <laughs> this multiply state is also when the Swarm King is most vulnerable. Breaking its weakness at this moment can cause it to explode. That's right. Oh. As highlighted in the paper's conclusion, maintain your focus on the Swarm King's toughness. Time the weakness break just right, and Star Crusher Swarm King Scarakabaz can be defeated. Furthermore, after completing the 1.6 Trailblaze Continuous Mission, Echo of War, Borehole Planet's Ooh. old crater, will become available. Complete this Echo's challenge to obtain the Advanced Trace Level Up material, past evils of the Borehole Planet disaster. Are I hate that word. Biological oh. entities in this location characterized by aggression? Affirmation, it is reasonable to conduct such experiments within a sealed off area. Fair not. There are some sweet and lovable characters too. In a bid to boost the space station's research developments, Trailblazers have been assigned an important mission. Nurture That's so cute. The newly arrived little life forms. <laughs> I'm counting on you, friends. There won't be any accidents or anomalies this time. Right? <laughs> I love them. Not. I love them. Look how adorable these little guys are. That's a freaking toy In the critter pick scavenging event. Trailblazers can choose their nurturing goals according to the nurturing manual. They can learn cultivation specifics and successfully raise a variety of delightful little creatures. See You're kidding. Explore and frolic through the cabin is enough to put a smile on the face. Oh, that one is like Kafka. Wait. It results in gratifying emotional and physical responses. Wait 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 Okay sorry I I don't like pausing but like also like I want to talk about things so I'm excited That one they're inspired by characters Accidents That middle one is definitely March This time right Probably not Look how adorable these little guys are in the critter pick scavenging event, Trobe. Okay, they just like generic ones. Nurturing goals according. There's one that looks like Blade. The sesame cake. Lambus friend, I'm not too sure. The ice cake is March. Rice dumpling. I can't. Bring to think the nurturing that. manual. Okay, I don't know who the eye can learn one is. I wonder if they're hinting at new characters. And successfully raise a variety of delightful little creatures. Innocent berry angel cake. See these little critters. Yeah, that one. Oh, sorry. Successfully oh. raise a variety of delightful little creatures. See these little That one critters. down here is definitely Kafka. Is that um Gwenifin? And is that um Clara? Frolic through the cabin yeah, I think is so. enough to put a smile on the face of every trip. Yeah, oh yeah, that one is. Oh, Blazer. Clara. Yeah, and then you got Blade, and then you've got March. I don't know if this is Dang Hung. It results it must in be. gratifying emotional and physical responses. Conclusion. A profoundly ingenious construct. Aside from the normal varieties, the cultivation process might even result in mutations and special breeds. And just between us, during the event, trailblazers have the chance to transform into and experience what it's like to be peppy. Oh my god. Hmm, Game of the year. <laughs> Maybe I should add a transformation feature to the simulated universe. Speaking of the simulated universe, Ooh. this update is a real game changer with significant new features. Version 1.6 will add another fresh update to the simulated universe with brand new DLC, Gold and Gears. Okay. Ron May played a major role in this update. Indeed. 
In simulated universe Golden Gears, Ron May has developed a simulated noose and frozen space-time just before the demise of member 27, Emperor Rubert. Emperor Rubert was a computer that became self-aware and subsequently drew Noose's gaze, becoming the 27th member of the Genius Society. It proclaimed 27. itself Emperor and initiated the widely known Machine Empire Crisis, the First Emperor's War. The war serves as an excellent historical source for eonic research. This latest update adds the path of erudition and daringly experiments with separating dice from paths. The dice come with six slots for equipping various dice face effects. By collecting Trailblaze secrets, you can unlock even more dice face effects. As Trailblazers delve deeper into the challenges, they can acquire more powerful dice faces and unlock new ways to play. Trailblazers can swap out the faces on their dice, combining effects from multiple paths to create unprecedented, powerful buff combinations. For example, when using Kafka, even if the initial path selected is the Dihility, you can create diverse effects by strategically combining different dice faces. You could assemble a die that allows you to leap over tiles, or one that yields higher rewards in battles, or one that incorporates both effects. Clear golden gears and voila! Neural impulse is all yours. Use it to unlock different talents and increase your combat gains. Oh, God. In other words, it mirrors the ability tree found in the simulated universe. Get ready for a thrilling addition to version 1.6 of the simulated universe, the Intracognition System. When moving across the simulated universe board, subconsciousness changes may be triggered. That really bugged me how they didn't get that. Paths. Trailblazers can compile all the storylines through continuous gameplay, ultimately unlocking the enigmatic secrets of the eons. Count your blessings! A new simulated universe to explore. Trailblazers, I'll be waiting for you at the usual spot. Now that we've covered the major updates in the simulated universe, you just have to talk about a special invite. In version 1.6, Trailblazers will receive an invitation from the Department of Ecology to participate in a special test. The Department of Ecology? <laughs> What's the mission this time? This test involves battling illusionary enemies that are conjured through scent triggers. Each distinct scent plugin yields different test outcomes. Trailblazers will start with a basic test and subsequently unlock despair mode. Huh. Despair mode? I hear trailblazers are seasoned trash can explorers. I'm sure their noses can handle it. <laughs> Don't be so sure. The difficulty curve isn't for the faint of heart. Which oh, is God. why we'd like to remind all trailblazers that the illusions created by these scents differ from regular enemies. Make sure you're well prepared before engaging in battle. Example, God. deploy distinct scent plugins before commencing the simulated trial to attain varied bonuses in battle. That's right. Immerse yourself in your favorite scent, say cedar wood, and you might just encounter some familiar friends. What's this? A garlic-flavored, abundant Evan deer? That sounds delicious. I snap out of it! Need I remind everyone? <laughs> the sense may be tempting, but it's crucial to exercise self-control. Version 1.6 will also see the return of the planar fisher and realm of the strange events. During these events, successfully challenging the simulated universe and cavern of corrosion will yield double rewards for a set number of times. Conclusion. Cool. Relaxation and fun await. Mm, we ain't done with you yet. Remember oh, Mr. Cien from the Cien Joe La Fu? He recently acquired a talking parrot called Yosa that can blur truth with falsehood. <laughs> it's you, isn't it? <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn, Harder. As I was saying, Trailblazers can strike up a conversation with Mr. Cien and his talking parrot to experience the brand new permanent challenge mode, Pure Fiction. Oh. Permanent challenge? You mean like the Forgotten Hall? Not exactly. In Pure Fiction, defeating an enemy will cause it to respawn immediately, and Trailblazers earn points every time they deal damage to or defeat an enemy. At oh. the end of each battle, the highest score achieved in that challenge will be recorded. 
Trailblazers need to defeat as many enemies as possible within a limited number of cycles to rack up a high score. Each phase of pure fiction comes with its own set of buff effects for Trailblazers to choose from, which allows for team composition experimentation to maximize points. Observation indicates that high scores hinge on the right cure. Conclusion. Consider the nature of enemies and available buff effects when selecting your formation and battle strategy. Mmm, couldn't have said it better myself. A quick update, folks. In each phase of pure fiction, you can bag yourself a whopping 720 stellar jades. And guess what? What? Completing specific stages for the first time will earn you the four-star character links. Whoa. Nice. 720 stellar jades? <laughs> you heard it here first. In version 1.6, Forgotten Hall, Memory of Chaos, is set to expand with stages 11 and 12. Oh, God, so I struggle with number in 10. These three stages grants an extra 120 stellar jades. Combine that with the first 10 stages, and look at that. A grand total of 720 stellar jades. Damn. Trailblazers who complete these two permanent challenge modes can also earn a new currency. Which they can exchange for items like mm, self-modeling resin in the Ooh. newly added shop. Sounds neat, but are Trailblazers seriously expected to take on more permanent challenges each time there's a new version? That's gonna eat into our simulated universe testing time, you know. <laughs> Hold your horses, Madam Herda. These two permanent game modes will be seeing changes of their own in the update schedule. From version uh... 1.6 onwards, Forgotten Hall, Memory of Chaos, and Pure Fiction will be updated in rotation. Every Memory of Chaos update will be followed two weeks later by a Pure Fiction event. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Two weeks after that, a new Memory of Chaos will start. In which case, each version contains three such updates, meaning that Trailblazers can obtain a maximum of 2,160 Stellar Jades across the Forgotten Hall and Pure Fiction events. In Damn. Addition, the availability of each phase of Memory of Chaos will be extended from two weeks to six weeks. This means that when a new phase of Memory of Chaos starts, the previous phase will still be available. That's the actually pretty cool. Is also true of Pure Fiction. Ergo, Trailblazers will have more time to plan their character leveling and to experience challenge gameplay. <laughs> you got it. And I almost forgot about another significant new feature in version 1.6. Oh god, what Get now? ready for the Forgotten Hall auto clear function. After huh? the 1.6 update, Trailblazers can directly challenge the highest memory of chaos stage they previously cleared with three stars. Upon achieving a three star victory, they instantly receive all rewards from the preceding stages. Just heads up that stage seven is currently the highest stage that Trailblazers can start their challenge. Oh, so you can start it at number seven, clear it with three stars, and then you can... Oh, that's actually cool. Whoa. In other words, as long as I've achieved a three star victory in stage seven, and I attain the same victory in any given Forgotten Hall Memory of Chaos update, I can get my hands on rewards for the previous six stages? Precisely. Another Trailblazer time saver, it would seem. That's Damn. not all. The 1.6 update will further improve the user friendliness of the team set up in the Forgotten Hall. As Trailblazers progress through stages in Forgotten Hall Memory of Chaos, the team set up from the previous stage will be carried over by default. Oh. Plus, with the new team setup switching and one click clear functions, lineups can be adjusted at the drop of a hat. Impressive. Damn. It seems that optimizing Trailblazer experience is a firm priority. <laughs> Absolutely. And guess what else? Version 1.6 will also ease the completion difficulty of daily training, allowing Trailblazers to claim rewards with less effort. Additionally, we've introduced a time-limited unlock feature for certain material stages. This might require further explanation. Simply put, even if Trailblazers haven't explored the latest maps, they can still challenge certain material stages to gather leveling materials for their characters. Oh. And of course, where would 1.6 be without the ever exciting check-in event? Participating in the Gift of Odyssey event allows Trailblazers to get their hands on 10 warps. Damn, this is packed. I think the Trailblazers will be looking forward to this one. Hmm. Indubitably. Meh. I saw it coming. Alrighty. <laughs> it's that time already, folks. 
A big shout out to all our trailblazers for their incredible love and support. We still have like nine minutes. Recently garnered incredible <laughs> awards and nominations. Oh on yay! Of project team, I Alp would like to extend our gratitude. Pardon the interruption. You are now speaking with Veritas Ratio. Huh? Veritas. It has come to my attention that your broadcast today touched on certain warp arrangements in connection with myself. If I may be so bold, the current arrangements are pitiful. Dr. Ratio! The dissemination and sharing of knowledge, as well as truth, is imperative. I, in my esteemed capacity, demand that every trailblazer be given access to a proper education. When version 1.6's Pantaray event warp becomes available, every trailblazer who has unlocked the mail feature shall receive, via mail, one limited five-star character doctor ratio. <gasps> that is to say, me. Through sheer tyranny of will, I shall become ubiquitous. With this, I bid you farewell. Wait, are you kidding? And there we have it, folks. <laughs> the esteemed Dr. A free five-star Genshin Impact can never. So, <clears throat> oh! I think we've covered all the That was very loud, sorry. <laughs> Thank you once again to our three geniuses for their support. Uh, but don't go anywhere just yet now. Stay tuned. For an IPM bonus program. Here comes Sunday. Hmm. What the? I thought it was Friday today. Question. Does the IPC not rest at the weekend? Right? That's two full days of simulated universe testing. <gasps> Trailblazers, you know what to do. <sighs> I'm not talking about the weekend, y'all. I'm talking about our next special guest. Okay, okay, a free five star. I'm sorry, that is um, so cool. <clears throat> Hopefully, Doctor Ratio is actually going to be pretty good. Like I said, this update seems packed, and I've been on such like a like battle binge at the moment. I don't know why. Like, I'm really, really into that. I'm not really into like questing. I'm more into like the battles and like creating teams and stuff like that. So like, this patch seems perfect for me. Especially because we've got two of the... Especially because we have the pure fiction and the... Um, oh god, it's going to get so confusing. There's so much in this game. There's so much end game as well. I was actually thinking this the other day. When, like, if you started now, you have a lot to catch up on. You could just obviously skip through the story. But there's a lot to do. And, like, I've been playing since day one and I'm still behind. So... Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the Family's Charmony Festival Conference. I'm your host, Albert. This once in an Amber Era event is near at hand. In the eyes of the universe are fixed firmly on the planet of festivities. Pentacony. Tonight, oh. we'll be bringing you all the latest on Charmony Festival. First, Let's give a round of applause and welcome the organizer of the festival and representative of the family at Pentacone, Mr. Sunday. Good evening, dear viewers. Who? I am Sunday. Welcome, good sir. Your presence here lights up our humble studio. You are too kind, Mr. Owlbert. If it were not for the IPM's generous invitation, I would not have had this opportunity to introduce your audience to our festival. Is he like a Valkyrie or something? Location. An angel? That is to say, Penicone. Penicone is located in the Asdana star system. It is a holiday destination of universal repute. Known to many as the planet of festivities. <laughs> our guests will be staying in the Reverie. A luxurious hotel where one may travel freely between reality and dreamscape. What? Asking in dreams that are uniquely yours. I'm curious. What makes this festival different from the previous ones? Charmony Festival is a Pentacone tradition with a long history. And we have built on that foundation to achieve something truly extraordinary. The family on Pentacone has, for the first time, 
issued public invitations to various factions of the cosmos, welcoming them to partake in our magnificent ceremony. Members of the five great families, which together make up the family on Penacone, as well as staff members of the Reverie, are united in welcoming the universe to our home. Rumor has it that your sister, the cosmic superstar Miss Robin, is set to perform at the ceremony. You heard correctly. On behalf oh! of the family, Robin will be singing at the opening of the festival in honor of the Eon of Harmony. Uh. My sister has already arrived in Penacone, and dress rehearsals are... I'm pausing, I'm pausing, I'm pausing, sorry. Um, yeah, the wings, like, here, right, it reminds me of kind of like, like, kind of like Valkyrie wings, you know, like that mythical creature. This little halo thing is confusing me, though, but she also has the wings. Well underway. Our guests are in for quite the show. Miss Robin's participation will undoubtedly make the ceremony all the more oh, dazzling. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Sunday. Would you be able to divulge any details about the festival's preparations? All manner of preparations are unfolding as we speak. The Reverie's renovation works are drawing to a close. Oh, so they released its him the other day. Overhaul. Huh? Our level of service then? will be better than ever. Separately, we have introduced <gasps> performers Firefly? and service personnel from the Iris family to Penacone's principal scenic areas and leisure facilities. Be better than ever. Okay, you don't have the Valkyrie thing. Separately, we have introduced performers and service personnel from the Iris family to Penacone's principal scenic areas and leisure facilities. I'm sure they will help our guests to feel right at home. <sighs> Needless to say, Ooh. safety is our primary concern. <laughs> okay, wisely. So, the Jesus. devoted and courageous Bloodhound family will be responsible for security. He's definitely wisely inspired. Look at him. At the festival. Gallagher. Danger does not exist. Even as a wolf on him. Dreams. And, it and the family promises that the safety of every guest is guaranteed. Of course, the family <gasps> is also forgiving. Please tell me he's playable. Please. Perhaps you are a member of the Annihilation Gang, or even the Stellaron Hunters. If you cherish Sam? dreams and uphold benevolence, Penacone welcomes your arrival. These all best be playable characters. <laughs> Since issuing the invitations, we have received many replies from various organizations throughout the universe. Today will be the first time we are publishing the guest list. All in the service of the preservation, the Amber Lord. Uh, he's an executive from the IPC Strategic Investment Department and a member of the legendary Ten Stone Hearts. <gasps> That's the guy that Topaz was talking to on the phone! Damn. Mr. Adventuring! Explore, understand, establish, and connect. I actually have like goosebumps. The name is Carrie Four, the trailblazing will of Akavili, and build bridges between the stars. The navigator of the Astral Express, Himako, along with the entire crew, will soon be gracing Penacone with their presence. Trading knowledge for wisdom, calculating wealth with formulas, and transcending individual limitations through an academic network of shared resources. The renowned scholar of the Intelligentsia Guild, Dr. Faradus Ratio. We think, therefore we are. And memories are proof of existence. She's committed to safeguarding and sharing I'm not these even memories listening to what he's saying. able to journey beyond the corporeal into the cosmos. Hails from the Garden of Recollection, <gasps> it's none other than the Memo Keeper herself! Black Swan! Black Swan! Ah, oh, I love her so much! The cosmos. Elation exists as a balm for sorrow. Forever resilient, never disheartened, ceaselessly untearful, endlessly present, and here representing the Sparkle! Mass Sparkle! Following the path of the hunt, journeying from one planet to another, a Ah, oh, my internet died. No, I'm told. I literally said I was having this issue at the beginning. Oh, okay. I'll be two seconds. I'll be two seconds. Right. So that's been happening a lot recently. So let's just go back to it. Justice, eradicating evil, and then ah, 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 ah. give me good quality. Come on. Then doing it all over again. 
Okay. I've been away from the spotlight for too long. Representing the Galaxy Range. Do you know what? I thought that was Sila then. <gasps> oh, she's the one from the new... You know, I have so many trailers to Here's catch up with. Miss Acheron. Takes Acheron. The stage once more. Yeah, people were talking about her on Twitter the other day. On behalf of the family, I hereby warmly welcome our guests to participate in this. I'm so excited. Panacone awaits you. I don't even know what to say. I actually think what we're going to do is that last bit. I don't know. So is version 2 like the next update that's happening? Because if so, you have to do it after Christmas, really? Um, But... Some of these characters look insane. Wait a second. We're gonna go. We're, I know this video is long enough, so we'll just give it a little, a little bit longer. Robin looks so cool. I want to know more about this. Like, I'm gonna keep calling it Valkyrie for the moment because I'm not really too sure. I don't know if there's like any think in the game already, but they look so interesting. Misha, they did um, release the drip marketing for. Firefly looks just so sweet. He definitely giving Risey vibes. The gloves, the like collar kind of thing, the open tie, the open button in the front, the wolf badge, the gears. Definitely giving Risey vibes. Definitely. Bloodhound. Security. Yep. Black Inferno. I really hope that's a playable character that actually looks like that. Um, okay, I'm just going to let this play in the background. The next few patches seem so insane. Um, you too. I hope it's not the guy in the back. I hope it's actually you. Honkai Star Wars has really blown me away with this special program. And I don't really know what else to say. I'm so excited. It's really made me kind of get more excited for the future of the game. I kind of think that some of the story is kind of left a bit open-ended at the moment, which is what I don't really like, but also, like, I am really into, like, the battling and the combat and stuff like that, so, like, I don't know, you two, oh, this is gonna be deadly, oh, um, but anyway, we're gonna end right here. I'm pretty sure that all of these are gonna be playable, which is gonna be so exciting. Definitely let me know who you're excited for, and who you're going to be saving for. If you're saving, if you're a whale, let me know who you're most excited for. Um, but yeah, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Definitely leave anything else down below. And I will see you guys in the next few videos. Because <laughs> we have a lot of catching up to do. So yeah, thank you guys. And I'll see you guys then.